Yes, we can. Okay. So thank you so much, Sergey. Um, so once that information is processed through CPQ and CRM or sales, uh, that information is automatically through synchronization sent back to the operation and financial side of the software uh, within Dynamics 365. So in this case, we're using the Business Central application uh, within the Dynamics 365 um, ecosystem. Uh, as uh, Pierre mentioned earlier, we will focus primarily on the configure to purchase from a manufacturer. Manufacturer, however, please note that the software is also capable of manufacturing uh, this particular product internally. So if it's uh, to configure to manufacture to order. So we'll just focus on the purchase from the manufacturer standpoint. Once that order is placed and um, configured within CPQ Sync, that is passed on to Business Central. And that will appear as an open sales order amongst our other open sales order list in here. The one that um, I've got synchronized and predefined for this presentation for ease is um, order number 29. So I'm just gonna open that up. As you can see, when you're looking at uh, this particular um, order, um, just refreshing this for a second, that's been my internet issue. So as you can see, um, that order was placed originally by Acme Industries. Um, and please don't mind the dates in here. It's a, this is a demonstration database, so it's a, it's a few months back. And you will see the reference from the CP, CPQ sync number or a CRM number. Uh, but what's important here is that you will see that the line item here uh, is showing you what you've configured in CPQ sync. This is very important because Business Central, uh, by default, out of the box, does not al allow you to be able to configure these types of configurations for attachments, accessories, or dealer or manufacturer options that custom your customers might want to purchase along with the actual uh, base model itself, which is the D DG series uh, compressor. You can also see that the price will also transfer over. If there's any discounts, that will transfer over as well and all the different configuration. Now, the key thing to, uh, to note when you are working with uh, the operational side or the financial side of the software is also you increase visibility in terms of inventory availability. So let me show you something in here without getting into too much detail. Um, looking at this particular compressor right now, you will notice that um, uh, we have one on order, which is quantity one, but we are down to negative two. Uh, very quickly, without getting into too much detail here, I just want to give you a very quick um, overview of how the system's working in the back end in terms of purchasing and financials without actually going too deep into those two, two, two areas. So now that you've seen how a sales order is actually viewed within Business Central, I want to show you what the purchasing process looks like, given the fact that we are at negative two right now, so clearly we have to purchase this. Very quickly from within the, within the sales order here, I can go ahead and create a purchase order, which will allow me, of course, to communicate the need of this particular model, along with the configurations for accessories and attachment directly to the uh, compressor manufacturer, whoever that happens to be you're purchasing it from. What's important to note here is that you will notice that instantaneously that purchase order is automatically created uh, with the same information that you found in the sales order. That's obviously communicating to the manufacturer essentially what it is that you want model wise and what the configurations are. So what I'm going to do very quickly here is I'm going to go ahead and receive this um, just so you can see the process flow. And then finally, of course, I'm going to go ahead and uh, once I receive that serial number, have that shipped out in the sales order. So you can see that integration between the two. So from here, I'm gonna go into the actual model itself, which is the line item or product code. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna enter the document line, line tracking. I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong one. I meant to say item tracking lines. From here, I'm just gonna make up a serial number. I'm just gonna to use today's date, 0302. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna receive a quantity one. You're not limited to purchasing just one, but in this case, we're just working with a quantity one. You can be purchasing two of these particular compressor. From here, I'm just gonna close that out and um, the software is now ready for me to receive this. Um, and what I'm gonna do simultaneously is I'm just gonna do it in one fell swoop, meaning I'm gonna go ahead and receive and invoice this just so that you can see that I can also invoice it 
simultaneously, but you can do it in two separate method uh, uh, steps. Uh, FYI, while, th while this is happening, I also want to emphasize that the software has a built-in warehousing and supply, ma supply chain management solution that will allow you to manage this from an inventory perspective. So the software is now telling me I forgot to enter an invoice number, which is a common mistake that most people make. Uh, it's a mistake that I purposely made sure I, I made a mistake on, just so you know that there are controls in the software that ensures that there is a vendor payable number entered before you can invoice it. What's important to note is as soon as I invoice that purchase order, it will in real time create a, an increase in inventory by one so that we could supply the customer with a serial number with it just we just received on the sales order. But in the background, it will also generate all the accounting entries, particularly on the GL side, on the payable side for uh, the accounting side. Uh, so I'm not going to open that up right now. We can do that in a much more detailed discussion or demonstration of the financial business central uh, portion of Dynamics 365. But what's important to note is that uh, that serial number is now available for us to um, to ship out to the customer. As you can see, the item availability is now minus one. It's minus one right now is because clearly I have a, another order that's actually uh, calling uh, on that same model as a demand from another sales order. So from here, I'm gonna go into the line button related information so that I'm able to ship this out. I'm gonna to go to item tracking lines. And from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and select whatever serial number it is that I uh, received. Uh, of course, I can easily uh, uh, ship out a different serial number, but this one I want to show you to make it easy. Uh, a one for one situation and the quantity one here is automatically defaulted because that's what we had on the previous screen. I'm gonna close that up. At this point, once we've allocated the sales order, uh, so the serial number to the sales order, there's the, there are uh, two steps involved in it uh, that will happen from a financial perspective. First, you can ship it, which means that you've delivered it to the customer, and then you can invoice it afterwards. Uh, for ease, I'm gonna just gonna show you uh, both process at the same time. So I'm gonna ship and invoice at the same time. Um, but of course I can break that down into two different steps. So at this point, I'm gonna click a post and it's gonna say ship an invoice. I'm gonna hit okay. And the software will now inherently create uh, multiple things. Um, in the background, it will create this document, which is a posted uh, sales invoice document with the same detail that you saw on the sales order, the model and all the configurations. What's also important to note is that it will automatically generate a receivable in the back end as well as the financial entries in the back end in real time. There's no need to batch this information. Now, <clears throat> from here, uh, to finish it off, you can you also have the ability to print this on hard copy or piece of paper, or you can also email this to uh, one or more recipient that needs to receive this invoice for approval for payment from your um, customer. That's it, thank you very much.